teacher's task is to teach the children and to see that they learn. The teacher knows each child's background. The teacher manages the classroom and organizes all that goes on in it. The teacher must keep up to date with new methods. The teacher develops a good relationship with every child. And teaches each one as an individual. The teacher uses the interest of the pupils. The teacher knows what to teach. And how to teach it. The teacher must keep careful records and cultivate links between school and community. Knows the right equipment and apparatus, makes visual aids, plans the timetable and program of work. The teacher is responsible for discipline and order. Must maintain high standards of work and behavior. Learn the new technology, attend courses and classes, Teaching is a complex business. Perhaps it is a pity that the skilled teacher makes it look easy. The day's work is planned with five and six-year-olds. In a few moments, all are busy. The children have been taught how to work independently. The teacher is free to be with individuals. One, about the bedtime. Shall we have a look to see what you've already done? Oh, yes, it's a book up oh, isn't it? What's this a picture of? She keeps careful track of their progress, especially at this age in reading. Very good. And the next book that you've chosen to go on to is Island and Deep River. So we'll read that together next time, all right? We'll just make a note of it for you. The use of new educational aids must be taught. This five-year-old's pleasure is one way into the teaching of reading. The older boy understands what to do. Do you remember how to work the machine? What do you do? You tell me what you do. You put it in, and then you have to find all of the shape. Yes, you listen to what it says, don't you? You're going to put it through, then. Can you make a set of circular shapes? And he's left to follow the task while the teacher turns her attention elsewhere. Eighteen. Now you've got to make your eighteen into two sets the same. See if you can do that. You break it so it's in two sets the same. The child's own book is in part a record of her progress. Refreshment is taken at will, so also is toileting. In a free-flowing day, set playtimes have no place. Teacher too. Another day, another room. She pauses for a break, which the children respect. It is agreed school policy, one of many matters decided upon in staff discussion. But you can't say once you've tried something, it won't ever work. Because yeah. a different group of children, a different day, mm -hmm. a different yeah. time of year makes all the difference to a particular place. You get a child who comes in and uh, 
all they are really ready to do is just to experiment with the apparatus and not particularly to find out much from it, but just to handle it. Uh, whereas another child may be at a uh, much um, more developed stage. Mm -hmm. The more, more you know an individual, the, the simpler it becomes to um, plan the next stage for him. You, you do this in your day-to-day -day planning. This is where I think we need this more flexible. Mm -hmm. you, you have One point on which all agree is that it takes many hours of planning and preparation to create an environment which is right for young children's living and learning. School buildings can be so different from one another. Of more recent design, this school is planned for changing primary methods. An open plan with no closed classrooms, but interconnecting and shared areas. The planning starts well before the school is ready for use. This mobile furniture flat against the wall. And the first shape are these very nice round tables, which are going to look quite splendid in these carpeted areas. Already they have ideas about how it will be. While we're all gathered together, I'd just like to have a word about next Thursday when we have our parent consultation meeting. Frequent staff meetings will promote agreed ways of working. If a folder of children's work is available, and in the classroom, something that every child has done. This idea of an example of, a whole week's example of children's written work in a special book for one, t for one week each term, so that during the whole year we've got a year's progression of work, is much more meaningful to the child and to the teacher, because the child looks back and says, uh, oh, look what I used to do when I was small and I was only five, and now I'm very much clever and I, I do much better work. And the teacher too looks back and says, immediately can see the progression, whereas writing a paragraph of a child's progress uh, it can be very vague. The new building proves a challenge, but an agreeable After one. After having taught in an open plan school for about just one year, um, there are obviously days when you wish you didn't have to come to school, but there are many days um, when you really look forward to coming to school because it's much more exciting and interesting. The children quickly take to the mixture of freedom and directed practical tasks. Balance my shoe, I've done that. Balance my book, I've done that. Balance five stones. Uh, if they enjoy what they're doing and know how to concentrate on it and get personal satisfaction from doing it, they know, in other words, how to exercise choice for themselves and how to derive satisfaction from an intellectual exercise, we are creating very good habits in these children, which will serve them in very good stead later on. 17, 80, 90, 100, 110, 110. Nearby is the wet work area. The floor is protected out of consideration for the excellent schoolkeeper. He has an important place in a caring community. We don't seem to have a noise problem, partly because of the way in which the school is built, and partly because the children are so absorbed in what they are doing. The entrance hall is a special shared area for language development. Yes, I can see it said, Simon, Christmas is a happy day, she said. Yes, it is the best day, said Elizabeth. I like it best of all. Well done, Paul. You've reached the end of that book now. Moving on to a new book. You might like to choose from Paul. These are called the Nipper Books. The child chooses his own. A parallel difficulty. Teacher and pupil discuss the level and content first, so that he understands what he is choosing. Individual teaching and open plan methods can be used in old buildings. 
Here, two classrooms are opened up to form a workshop learning centre for about 60 top junior children. Two teachers work cooperatively, running a mixed system of directed teaching and pupil choice. Boys make their own slide set of the life cycle of the frog. The leader teaches the rest. Some learning programs are carefully planned. Yes, at this point he could finish most of level two here, that's all the A cars. Yes. And he had started some of the tasks. In One pupil's mathematical program is under discussion. The careful planning of the teachers enables the pupils to work independently. Mostly level three, there were one or two of level twos, and there were some new tasks here, yes. which I wanted him to try, starting here. These are ones which have uh, been made up very recently by teachers okay. in Kent. So we make them a matrix which is based upon the result of this test, which indicates to us, when we mark it, the level at which they should start. You could say level one or level two or level three, or it could go <laughs> higher, although that's unlikely. are kept by the children. Some relate to self-chosen projects, others to teacher-assigned tasks. Well, every child has one of those work record books, and most of their work's recorded in there. For example, the science is in there. This is for the whole of the four, the four junior school years. Lower down, they do air, water, and sound, and when they come up to the top units, usually electricity, magnetism, and so on. Teachers' special skills are shared through direct contact with one another. All right, what's the next one? At times, the headmaster is part of the teaching team. Let's have a look and see. Together, he and the children make a radio vision of a familiar fairy tale to show to younger pupils. Prince coming through the hedge. The prince coming through the hedge. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's who says that's you? Yes. Yeah. Right. When you're ready, then. All right. His curiosity led up to asking a peddler. We told him that a legend says that there is a sleeping castle behind the hedge. These children right. do not We've fear the machine. Coming up on the horse. So, Matthew, you're the horse, are you? They master technology and the use side. it. Right. Okay. Meanwhile, in the resources centre, another small group pursues a self-chosen study interest. One aim of the exercise is to help the children to believe in themselves. We've got some great pictures here. Yeah, I've got plenty of books, David. There's lots of them. Um, There's only one. Slide on it. Did you get the type? Yeah. Well, we sit down and we discuss what, what we have. To Working do. together begins in the infant school. Number two. How many times can you read? Breathe. Twenty. children become independent and responsible learners through working to a plan which they understand. Yes, there must be a clear understanding between the children and the teacher as to how the classroom is run. Uh, I feel good planning and basic organisation is essential 
if a happy working atmosphere is to be maintained. This indicates to the children how they share their areas. These cards help the families to move into the areas. This again is a flexible arrangement. <coughs> I don't call them groups, they are families, simply because I have integrated intelligence and age. Five to seven plus. There are four areas of work. Writing, craft area, including the home corner, reading, and maths area. There is also some direct teaching. I will perhaps call out, draw out the seven-year-olds or the five-year-olds or the six-year-olds if I have to do any direct teaching. And the children become articulate not only in speech and drama but in painting and craft work and the written work. Preparation of material and objects are of great importance. It involves the child in communication. Uh, this leads the child to using his basic skills. His uh, curiosity is aroused. He's involved in finding out. Time is found for interest to unite the class, to give fresh starting points and new ideas. In here, on the far side, uh, the old base here is from about two weeks to two tens. And we got more out the back of the road. These are all known as dairy shorthorns. They're a mixture of brown and white. These are called roads. The horn, just this in front of the ear, that's the horn. So you take those out. Then right? the milk is cooled again and then put into bottles and the milk tops are put on the bottles. Then all the bottles of milk are put into crates and then the milk is put on to the milkman's van. And the milkman brings the milk to us. Look, I'm just with well-planned displays, ideas are spread to the whole school through the shared space of the entrance hall. Long, inconvenient corridors are not so easy to use in an educational way. Infants go home, young juniors go out to study the environment around the school. A building site is a very useful place for environmental studies. There seems to be some basic human urge to build a shelter. Children will construct dens, tree houses and camps, usually large enough to get inside. Can you see the pile of cement anywhere? Yes. 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 No questions to be asked. There are factual answers and reasons why. Why are bricks different colours? Why are they different shapes and weights? But children often need to be helped to see and to look. Oh, yeah. Let's have a look. These are window frames. Are they painted already? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. That's right. That's right. That was good. They return to school to study for themselves. Now, what have you got round this one? You've got, well, it's our phone. And you're trying to test to see which insulates best. Yeah. So we want to see how far the thermometers have gone down. No, There's a lot of difference. That, that fiberglass has really done a good job, hasn't it? Yeah. What about the special bits? They may even be able to predict the results of their experiments. They set up a hypothesis and they test it. To learn that science is a way of working. That feels nice and warm, but it hasn't done a good job, has it? Water's being sucked up. Just think what would happen if your house was like that. No damp course. Mm -hmm. You would be damp and miserable. Mm -hmm. There is no end to the possibilities of work on building. Here is a record in which experience is relived, summarized, re-explored, re-enjoyed. 
In this school, cooperative teaching has made outdoor study easy. The children work on a system of personal study, teachers' work assignments and choice. Private study is the children's own choice of whatever interests them. Two interconnecting rooms are used with two teachers for over 60 children. At present, the third years are being taught French. The children come from seven classes and are taught in groups of 20 to 30 in the French room. No. Children can also use the figurines in the classroom to practice in small groups at any time they like. The creativity area is next door. We teach this way because it is more efficient eventually. Yeah. It's more effective. The, other, the class lesson from the front is so baseball. I'm conscious that we can see the trends. We see them ourselves every day. And this is reinforced by recent work of the educational psychologist. Uh, for two years, he fed the results of our reading ages into a computer. And they came out showing that children who come to us doing not very well do better. Those who come in doing well do much better. And those who come in doing very well make big gains. I think there should be a respect for children, which is reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Individual teaching is usual, as here with multi-based mathematical material. What about that one? Main of one. Yes, we can't really divide that into any small rules, can we? So we're going to call it one left over. The teacher knows that she is the chief learning resource and deploys her time and effort accordingly. But teachers themselves, how do they master new equipment and new ideas? Whenever you get a group of teachers together. Whenever you meet another teacher, you start talking. I think teachers learn well from one another. All too aware of the needs and individuality of each child, of the rapid growth of educational technology, what prevents teachers from becoming discouraged? Well, it's something to know that the other space is the same problem as you do. When children are receiving individual help, children of mixed ability can be taught side by side. How's Miss King getting on, then? Can't see what you're doing here, can we? Stand all this up and we can see, can't we? Okay. My paw here, that's it. Now I can see. What have you got in your sentence, maker, patient? I have a cat. Good. Now, what... Can we take it a bit further? What colour is the cat? Black. It's the black one, is it? There we are. Slip it off. This 11-year-old class contains the full range of attainment and ability. Despite the breadth of ability and interest, there are times when the most effective way is for the whole class to learn together. I want to remind you of the diagram that I drew on the board yesterday and we had a look at. And you started to do some notes on it, but I just want to go over some of the things again because some people weren't really terribly clear, do you remember? Now, this area goes from the North Downs and we live just on the edge of the North This Downs. is a follow-up of a real experience, right which involved thorough preparation and a visit in advance. Some members of a nearby college were invited to join in. I was just saying, Mrs. Pitt, one of the interesting things is that um, it's, it's the vastness of, of the quarry which provides an interesting exercise. For instance, how would you go about finding the area of, of this well the whole next thing. Saturday the real work begins the teachers know how young children can learn as well as what they should learn this is what real geographers do clay and again from here to here you've got the sandy soil two large classes are here in self-chosen groups with teachers students and other interested adults horizons very technical term for you. Yeah. you and then measure this, and then from there down to the bottom, okay? Everyone can look, 
but not everyone will be aware of the subtleties of what they see. Uh, in this situation, I think the teacher is to be the catalyst. Uh, he'll see something that's green, and in that way come to understand that the green he sees is really many greens. Uh, lots of children will appreciate that this is there, and become frustrated because they can't think how to communicate it. Uh, and talking it out with the teacher does help a great deal. And uh, from there, a child is one step further uh, along a trail of uh, artistic satisfaction. The task of the teacher makes it sound rather like a, a burden, which it isn't, of course, if you take the time to prepare and are willing to take the time to prepare then wherever you are, inside or outside, the children can be divided into groups and work as individuals at their own level and their own time, I think. And you're free then to go around and to advise or to be there when you're wanted, to help and to assist, and provided you've got the range of materials available. And there are times, of course, when the child doesn't want you there. They don't want you peering over their shoulder. They want this, this moment of privacy. And uh, they'll come and show it to you when they want, when they want to. Know that you are, in fact, part of a team. There used to be a time, didn't there, you know, when uh, teachers went straight into their classrooms and closed the doors and kept very secure in there because there was this fierce sort of element of competition. You didn't want to know what was going on in someone else's classroom and you didn't want them really to know what was going on in yours. I think the best thing today is that um, you can consult with your colleagues. You can go and ask for help and be sure that you get help. And it will um, assist you in areas where you're not quite so confident. Well, I think if you're going to educate children, you've got to put yourself out a bit. Mothers and friends are included in this team. Children learn by doing. These active learning circumstances call for the high skill of the teacher. After lunch, there is still much to find out. Observation and experiment lead to tentative conclusions about the properties of natural materials. The study has covered space and time, cause and effect, has stirred imagination and widened horizons. Work tools and equipment, three full scrap sheets of it, and the children are checked. Richard Excel, yes. Gary Jones, yes. Robert Matthews, yes. Bri Brinley Thomas, yes. uh, Carolyn Young. Now comes collation of information, recapitulation, and varying modes of response. Right, so that is really a scientific approach to this study. When we look at the rocks and draw them in diagrammatic form, a diagram, a picture, drawing. Now this is Suzanne's idea of what she saw the quarry. Now, this is looking up towards the motorway, is it, Suzanne? A rigorous intellectual discipline at the right level for each pupil. Work you had, the notes you got from the quarry. Now, what was the angle of elevation Shirley got using the clinometer? Um, angle of elevation, where is it? Oh, here it is. Was it 16, 16, 16 degrees? Right. Now, we must get that black line onto the... Thinking about the quarry visit, I think the work that I was doing this afternoon wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't gone down and done the work in the field because they could really see the geographical features and therefore the abstract work that I was doing in fact made sense to them. If they hadn't seen it, you know, it, it just would have been rather vague and, com and completely abstract. I think uh, a lot of the work we did too was very important for the more intelligent children because it really does deepen their understanding in this field of geography, when they do see the physical features there. This is in British Fossils, page 23. The brachiopods are known as lampshells because in shape they resemble early Greek, Greek lamps. They are bivalves. No, bivalves, pronunciation. Bi meaning two valves. Two valves, bivalves. They are bivalves, that is, they possess two shells, one above and one below the creature, and they live in sea. The work is thorough. But I don't know how to pronounce it. I look at that Persicaria, I think. Yeah, Persicaria. Shall I watch them? Yeah, yes, better. Time is taken to achieve a high standard, to select words for personal forms of expression. 
When you're looking at these things in detail, does it suggest anything to you beyond the actual visual thing that you saw on Saturday, beyond the quarry sign? Well, kind of. Okay. Why? Why well, Because it, it goes down to the bottom where there's all water. And what, what, what does the water suggest to you? Uh, lava. Lava. Good, good. Anything else along that line that might suggest itself to anyone? Ian? The great thing is, you know, like there's been an earthquake. Birds in the branches and crickets piping. Monkeys shrilling. Someone seeing me, staring so fixedly at nothing, might be excused for thinking me vague, abstracted, lost in introspection. No, I'm awake, absorbed just looking in a different direction. This is the kind of thing that we want to do when we're writing down thoughts about something like the quarry. To look at it in detail. This work was helped by a high ratio of adults to children. There were Ammonites and Benonites. They were the first people to pick them up for millions of years which no man has ever seen before. I'm glad you got that idea of a million years ago. It's uh, the thing that always impresses me, that uh, these things have died and settled down on the earth and lain there for all that time for us to come along now and just to, to poke down below the surface. School doors increasingly open outwards to the community. And in to these inner city infants come boys from a nearby independent school, releasing the teachers to teach small groups. I've been going to see for over two years now. Well, they're five of them, but they usually have plenty of ideas of what to talk about. They, they, they often start the conversation sometimes. In fact, when you're young, I think when you're developing, you do need intensive, really intensive care. And it has been shown that intensive care makes a very great difference when you have developed. And you, are, you have a far more open mind. Well, obviously it matters, because if, if somebody can't talk to somebody else, then they're going to they're gonna close up inside themselves, they're going to be very, very um, inhibited and um, uh, introspective. They're, they're not going to make friends. In fact, they're going to make friends with very few. They're not going to really um, develop now themselves. Then, this is the story of a mouse called Trubloff. And there he is. And this mouse, Trubloff, wanted to play the balalaika. See? Now then. Trubloff was born in an inn which is a kind of pub. And the inn was part of a little village in central Europe, where the winters were very cold and very snowy. Um, there is this very deep relationship between the children and the boys. Yes, it's been going on for three years. The children look forward to Tuesday afternoons when they work with the Aline's boys. They know exactly which boy they're going to work with, but they are not sure what activity they're going to do that particular afternoon. Oh, another thing you might think is trivial, she'll, she'll remember that and she'll remember it for two or three weeks. And you, you would have forgotten it after a day or two. They put things in different perspectives than we do. I think we do certainly help some of the kids who are slow because there's a girl in one of my groups who started off the year, she wouldn't talk or anything, she's very, very quiet. And she's now quite chatty. She now, she used to be very, very slow, she had to help with all the pictures. We do uh, collage and I have to cut everything out for her and show her where to put it. But now she's uh, doing it all herself, she's improved a lot. Well, the piece I'm going to play you now is by a composer called Mozart, who lived a very long time ago. So you listen carefully. can only gain from such contact. Many teachers welcome mothers who feel that they really can have a stake in the school.
Um, this is your first time at one of the afternoon sessions? Yes, it is. Uh, I've been making a few little dolls, but I'd like to know a bit more about it all, really. They look after the library, work in small groups with the children, reading stories, doing cooking, helping with sewing. Uh, some of the parents come in to help with the school. Dorothy does. Um, you do? Yeah. We have six children. Fathers give expert help, encouraged by the schoolkeeper. Greater the contact with the parents yeah. and greater the understanding between It would be much more difficult to organise swimming instruction for all the children if it weren't for the help of the mothers. The teacher has half the children at a time. She stays outside the water. One parent is in the water for safety reasons and the other parents watch at the side to help and encourage the children. They play and practice with their parents after school. Schools now have a changing relationship to the outside world. Each school has its own ways of interacting in the neighborhood. Here, close contact is maintained with a nearby preschool playgroup. Children of different maturational levels, home backgrounds and daily routine converge looking to the school where they will later develop unity. Brothers and sisters await them. Again, mothers are welcomed, establishing links between the cultures of community, home and school. The beautiful environment is willingly shared. In a far corner of the same county, the staff must work imaginatively to produce acceptable conditions. Children know that teachers care by the way they provide. The corridors are a complement to what is happening within the classroom. Just as in the classroom we attempt to make an exciting, homely, stimulating environment, so we do the same in the corridors. Well, this is the entrance to the classroom and it sets the tone of the uh, quality and excellence that I hope we are getting from the children's work. And uh, the classroom is where we live for the year. Well, you have set the classroom up, haven't you? So you have, in fact, um, decided what the options are to some extent within the classroom. And this is again the teacher's role because he's got to organise the classroom so that at uh, points of crises he can be there and so that there is a calm and quiet, not silent, but, uh, you know, calm a uh, conducive working atmosphere within the classroom to enable this uh, to go on. I think we need a bit more water. Oh, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, where have we got to? Yes. Where have we got to? Well, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, just show me how you did that. So, um, so this is 54. There are some pieces of work which are handed down from one generation to the next, from brother to sister. And they don't get tired of it because it is part of them. Here is a symbolic link with the creative spirit of those who have gone before. And uh, what I uh, then set about was enriching their uh, vocabulary of expressing what they had found. Uh, uh, we talked uh, about things and new words, of course, come in. You can talk about emerging and things, but when a, t uh, a butterfly comes out of a chrysalis and a butterfly emerges, that's, uh, that's a lovely word. And, and if you can do a bit of a side down, down the middle and just dig all that out but leave that little. Great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think that uh, when children have been working uh, for so long, um, all the morning, the very least that you can do to uh, show how much you value it 
um, and in a sense to focus their attention on what they're doing is to mount it and display it well. The long classroom project of breeding and caring for the butterflies ends in going to release them. Well, that is the last thing that we do together, those boys and myself. Uh, they will now go on to their next school and I shall have a new class or go on to something else. And in the past sort of year we've had those uh, butterflies as eggs. We've looked after them, sprayed them, uh, nurtured them and tended them. They did come out and today we let them go. And that is what I do to my, I hope I do, to my children. Let them go with enormous hope. And that is what they've done to their butterfly. With great joy.